what do you want to want to do in that situation before you go to bed first thing in the morning when you get home from work whatever the situation is that you're doing this bad habit you're doing this thing that you know isn't serving you How are we? For those of you new here, I'm a psychology student trained to be a therapist. So on this channel, we talk about positivity, mindset, well-being, mental health, and all things like that. So if that sounds of interest, stick around. Today, I wanted to get a little bit philosophical, talking about the idea of what you want versus the idea of what you want to want. Uh, now, it sounds a little bit confusing, so I'll sort of go through and spell it out in a minute. All this came from a podcast that I listened to with Chris Williamson. Um, he's someone who's probably going to come up a lot on this channel in the next few weeks just because I'm going through a lot of his stuff at the moment. He runs the Modern Wisdom podcast. I'm sure if you're watching this, you've probably come across it. Really, really good. Sort of, I don't really listen to Diary of a CEO anymore. Gone off it a little bit. This is more the one that I sort of spend an hour or two a week going through. So if it's not something you'd listen to, I'd highly recommend it. This idea is basically about not just being a slave to your biological urges and going for the simple option of what your body's crying out for. Now, on this channel, I talk a lot about your body speaking to you and your body knowing a lot more than you think it knows and it telling you to do things that you should completely listen to. Obviously, if your body is screaming out that you need sleep or water or something like that or to get up and move, that's completely different. Those are things you should listen to. However, often a lot of what your body is telling you is very, very short term. For example, what your body is nearly always going to ask for is dopamine. Like most things in the world, dopamine obviously isn't inherently bad. The issue comes from, in this day and age, how we receive it. With things like crappy foods, social media and porn, our brain is used to getting unlimited amount of dopamine absolutely on demand, no effort exerted. When in reality, that's not really how we were meant to receive it. That's where the idea of delayed gratification and sort of working for that feeling of dopamine originally came from. Basically, what you want, as in what your body's screaming at you, isn't necessarily what's good for you long term. And what you want to want is more about the person you want to be and the direction you want to go in. One example, at 6am when your alarm goes off to go to the gym or to go for a run, very, very few people on the planet want, inherently, right there, their body is telling them, right, you want to get up. What it's normally saying, especially in winter months when your body's out of circadian rhythm and it doesn't like being awake when it's dark, is telling you to go back to sleep. But what you want to want is to get up to go to the gym or to go for a run. You need to override that biological urge. Because yes, especially if you've gone to bed a bit later than you should have been, you do want to get more sleep and that's not necessarily a bad thing your body never really wants anything bad for you but it may not be the right thing to do at that moment in terms of your long-term goals the example chris williamson gave is before bed what do we want to do have a donut spank one off and scroll through instagram like we're all men let's be honest that is what our body is telling us to do because it just wants as much dopamine as possible because that's what it always wants because dopamine used to be a reward drug that may be what you want to do because your body is telling you you want to do it. But if you actually engage your brain, what you really want to want to do is probably put your phone in the other room, make a cup of tea, read a book and get to bed eight hours before your alarm goes off. That's what you want to want. And this is why forming good habits can be so hard because short term, which is what a lot of the biology of your, your brain is based on, those aren't fun like that is not fun and rewarding in the short term because your biological circuit doesn't necessarily understand that if you read a book and have a cup of tea rather than scroll on instagram for three hours before bed you're actually going to get a better quality of sleep which is going to make that 6 a.m alarm hurt less that's why it's so important to understand that you don't break habits you replace them with better habits everything you do is a habit in one way or another that's just how our brain works there's so much data to show that but what people struggle with is they, for example, stop drinking or stop smoking or get off social media or something like that, which are all inherently good things, but because they don't replace them with another habit, 
one, it's near impossible to break the habit in the first place because your body will just go back to doing what it's used to doing. And two, it becomes a bit useless breaking the habit because you've got rid of that bad thing, but because you haven't replaced it with anything good, you just end up not really doing anything. And even if you don't fully go back to the first habit, you just sort of sit in between a good habit and a bad habit and just doing nothing. That's why as much as I don't really like them, vapes, nicotine gum, chewing gum, things like that, that helps people who have quit smoking step back because rather than having a cigarette, they do something else. So for you, for example, rather than sitting on Instagram for two hours before bed, absolutely frying all your dopamine receptors, read a book. Go on Amazon and buy a shitty five pound alarm clock and sleep with your phone in the kitchen. Just so again, first thing in the morning, you're not turning over and touching the screen. Because we're all human, even if you genuinely only intended to poke the screen to turn off your alarm, if you see that you've got five messages on Instagrams or a load of WhatsApps and the group chat's gone off overnight, you, you can't help but look, that's just who we are. So if you've got bad habits that you know that you need to break, rather than just saying, oh, but this is what my body is telling me, this is what I want, or oh, I just know it's a bad habit, but I don't know what to do. What do you want to want to do in that situation before you go to bed, first thing in the morning, when you get home from work, whatever the situation is that you're doing this bad habit, you're doing this thing that you know isn't serving you, what would you rather do in that time? What do you want to want to do? You might get to the end of dinner every night and your body is screaming for something sweet. We all know that stereotype of you could eat five bowls of pasta, but at the end of it, you, your body's still going, oh, actually, I could do with a bit of cake just for something sweet to finish. And you might be getting that bit of sweet or that bit of reward by going to the fridge and smashing a whole cake. When in reality, just because your body wants that bit of sweet, what you want to want is actually, could I just have a bar of dark chocolate in the fridge and I just break off a line? That, that's personally what I do. My housemates think I'm a complete weirdo. But if I get a craving for chocolate, rather than going down the shops and smashing a whole Terry's chocolate orange or something, which I could easily do, I just go to the fridge, break off a single line of dark chocolate and eat that. And yeah, that is not easy. Obviously, I want to eat the rest of the bar or I want to have more of it. But if I know that I can eat that, and from previous habits, if I can just get through the next 20 minutes of wanting more chocolate, actually my body stops crying out for it. So in summary, a task I'd recommend is physically, you know we love it here, write down the list of bad habits or a list of things that you do that you don't want to do or whatever, and literally draw an arrow across or do a table or whatever and do habit, what I, what my body wants or what, what bad habit I'm doing, and then do on the other side, what do I want to want to do in that situation? And by the way, I've made a lot of this about sort of like things like eating chocolate, scrolling on Instagram, physical. This could be emotional as well. This could be at work, for example, if you have a very stressful job, when a customer raises their phone, uh, raises their voice to you on the phone, what you probably want to do is either completely shy away or scream back at them, depending on what person you are, when in reality, as usual, the actual answer is somewhere in the middle, where you want to hold your ground and not wilt, but at the same time, you don't want to get sacked by swearing at a customer. I hope I've laid that out in a way that makes sense. Thank you for making it all the way to the end. I do appreciate you guys who stick around. As always, don't forget to like and subscribe. Comment any other opinions you have below, and I will see you in the next one. Until then... Take care, lads.